Hey guys, this is Duke from Gas Mask Bunker, back again with another video for you all. Now on the topic of the M45, I've noticed that there's two distinct types of opinions regarding it. There are the people that think it is the coolest mask they've ever seen, and the people that think it is one of the ugliest. However, neither of these groups can truly deny that the M45 is one of the most versatile and important gas mask designs of the 21st century, and possibly throughout history. Why do I say this? Well, they're really, if you look into the M45's history, you can see that this mask was pretty much adapted for just about any role they needed it to do, albeit most of those adaptations didn't get officially adopted or last very long, but it really was the first one mission or all mission mask that was only rivaled later in the with the Avon M53 and the Scott GSRE designs. However, we're not going to be talking about any of the vast majority of adaptations that the M45 went through. We're going to be talking about one specific one. And if you could have deciphered from the title of the video, we're going to be talking about an extremely rare Wilcox part number 2300G01 exhalation valve kit. Now, if that wasn't a mouthful, there's plenty more to come, so please bear with me. So... When Wilcox Industries developed the Patriot Hybrid Life Support System, they realized that because they were tailoring this to the United States government, they were going to need to, ad uh, to adaptate a bunch of the existing protective masks in, within the US DOD to work with their SCBA system. Now, the important thing to know about the Patriot was because it was both an SCBA and PAPR, it ran off of mostly positive pressure, and particularly its hose system, which was sort of a, uh, a continually inflated reservoir of air, meant that there wasn't a lot of back pressure due to the relatively weak papper uh, that users would be continually fighting against the, uh, the free flow from the papper or the SCBA. And so to eliminate this, this sort of fighting against the unit itself, uh, Wilcox introduced an, an accessory, a modification that they presumably did in-house, where there was an attached uh, housing onto the, st the standard exhalation valve of the modified face piece, or face piece to be modified, that would incorporate a 3M Scott uh, spring-loaded purge valve, which essentially all that would do was create some exhalation valve resistance so that basically the uh, inhaled air would have a lot more back pressure so that if the seal were to break, all any agents would basically be flushed out immediately. And not only that, but that sort of um, back pressure would allow a greater reservoir pocket of air in the breathing tube so that the user was not having to suck directly from the blower or SCBA unit itself. So it made breathing resistance a lot more effortless and more truer to just, you know, normally breathing without a mask. But anyways, these accessories were advertised by Wilcox for a variety of masks, most notably the M45, which is about the only mask that you can find these valves for, if you can even find them. Uh, they also made adapters for the M40, the MCU, uh, or the MCU2 slash P and MSA Millennium masks, and the Avon FM12, which really didn't look any similar to the uh, the previous adapters. It was sort of just a replacement PSM with a spring-loaded purge valve inside, but I digress. Uh, really, the only, like I said, the, these adapters here uh, are very, very rare. These were pretty much only adopted by U.S. Special Forces. Uh, there's photographs of Delta Force and Navy SEALs using these masks for training within the mid-2000s, and they're, they're very hard to come by on the surplus market. There's not a lot of them that were made, and pretty much you can guarantee that a lot of them were destroyed or, you know, demilitarized after the use so that nobody else could use them. However, on the rare occasion, some of these will pop up. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is due to the Patriots being available on the, uh, the law enforcement market, which they were, but there wasn't exactly a lot of LEOs using M45, so that probably isn't the case either. But nevertheless, a few of these have leaked onto the surplus market, and when they pop up, they can go for exorbitant amounts of money. And due to this, I have taken the time and liberty of 3D modeling this valve housing, which I will show off better in a moment, which you can download for free and 3D print your own, and it comes with a relatively non-intuitive set of instructions inside. So be sure to check that out in the description. But I digress. Back to this. So we really start seeing these valves uh, being used. I would presume they'd be around around the same time that the Patriot was introduced. So let's say maybe 2003, maybe even 2002 that they were in development. And they got used for quite a decent period, pretty much up until the 2010s. The last photograph that I have, or at least the latest photograph that I've seen of these valves in use, is with U.S. Navy EOD MU-8, I believe it was, uh, using Wilcox Patriots and M45s with these exhaust valve adapters. 
uh, as late as 2008, and they may have been used even further later, but by that point, the M53 was out on the market and there wasn't really much of a need to adapt existing masks to positive pressure, only when you had that the, the advantage of being able to adapt the mask itself uh, through to positive or negative pressure with the rotation of a valve. So that's sort of what killed this design, but it is still a very, very interesting footnote in the history of gas mask development, or at least gas mask development for tactical solutions. So a very rare accessory, as I, I cannot understate that, and I'm very, very lucky to have this. And uh, if you remember from my M5 Hanford video, this is actually the mask that I mentioned that uh, uh, I had Moulage pay for me in trade for that, that modification that I did. But anyhow, let's get into the actual uh, kit itself here. So... What we have here is a pretty run-of-the-mill standard M45. However, obviously, this one has been tailored for special forces use with the M7A1 voice projection unit and adapter ring on the front, which you can also find on my uh, GrabCAD page. And essentially, all this accessory is is a plastic housing, presumably nylon 612 with a 33% glass-filled content, similar to the M45 hardware. And you would have the actual housing body itself, which would retain the purge valve, and then you'd have this threaded retaining cap, which would go over it. And then you have the purge valve itself. Now, as I probably already uh, implied, these purge valves are a standard 3M Scott accessory, which means that any 3M Scott mask that uses these would be compatible with the Wilcox exhaust valve. Uh, these, ma these valves themselves are featured in at least two different masks on the industrial market, which include the, the ELSA EEBD, or Emergency Escape Breathing Device, and the, uh, the Scott slash Sabre Vision 3 face piece for SCBA use. So, and as you can see, these pretty much just use a Draeger style outlet valve. So if you make a replica of these, and I did actually 3D model these purge valves themselves, uh, you can take this. These literally are the same exhalation valve style as like Israeli masks, or you can find these uh, on a lot of Draeger masks as well. Um, and there's basically a CNC machined uh, uh, stainless steel pin, which holds the valve. And then there is a plastic damper, which provides the pressure down on the valve to keep it level and prevent it from curling, so it has more exhalation resistance. And then you have a small spring in there, which would obviously provide the pressure for uh, allowing the valve to create more resistance for back pressure in the face piece. And there is an O-ring to create a seal around the edge of the valve itself inside the housing, and basically these two components split apart. But I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's very fiddly. And as you can see throughout the back of there, there is the ledge for the actual purge valve to sit on, and a standard exhalation valve. So this also not only uh, increases the protective capability of the seal itself and creates back pressure for better, uh, for less breathing resistance, but it also allows the mask to be double valved to further resist any agent penetration through the exhalation valve. And as you can see, the drinking tube wraps around this housing and fits into a small clip molded onto the side. And then there are simple cutouts for the drinking tube and the communications port, which I can go ahead and remove this... Uh, uh, this entire housing from the the exhalation valve because these um, these adapters are only held on to the uh, the outlet valve body with red urethane adhesive like they use a red uh, plastic adhesive sort of thing it's it's almost like super glue I'm not sure if it's super glue but it seems very similar to it but uh, anyways they use a very uh, very weak epoxy and so over time it becomes brittle and this one basically was falling off already when I got it so that's actually kind of a good thing for me because it allowed me to remove this valve entirely and 3D model it for you guys to make your own replicas. So with that out of the way, you can also see the cutout for the um, the mounting tab for the original rubber cover, which if you want to see what the original outlet valve would have looked like, check out one of my other videos featuring M45s. And if you look inside the drinking connector holder here, you can see that how they got to stick in there is they used two o-rings and a plastic insert which helps keep them in place and that's again all held together with a sort of urethane adhesive anyways i'm going to pull this off of the valve body it's pretty much only retained by the uh the drinking tube up here so that just pulls off and you can see the interior of the housing itself it's very very simple and it's uh Quite a shame that these don't exist on the market in quantity because they're a very, very useful accessory and I would have loved to see more of these, you know, floating around. Anyone that runs a PAPR SCBA and wants to use a, you know, a modern uh, military mask, like an M40 or an MSA Millennium, something of that nature where they want a more tactical gas mask for their, uh, you know, their PAPR or SCBA kit would have greatly benefited from this. And in fact, I've actually um, attempted to model the, uh, the, the Millennium version. I don't have the 
drinking uh, connector retainer inside there with the O-rings and all that, but I just did this as a test print. I ordered this through Shapeways uh, using the, um, the versatile plastic in black, and as you can see, the print quality is pretty darn good. It's a little bit gritty, but it's it's near enough for rock and roll that you can take actually like the legitimate threaded retaining cap and just screw it right on there. So I'm probably going to print a replica of these eventually just to have the full ensemble. And as you can see, I have uh, this is not a replica um, purge valve. This is taken off of a Elsa EEBD, as mentioned before. But it is literally the same valve with the only difference that the uh, the paint stamps on them are different. For whatever reason, all the industrial ones have like either a red or a yellow paint stamp, whereas the ones on the uh, the Wilcox valves will always have like a, a green and a, uh, a blue stamp on them. I'm not sure why that is, but it's pretty interesting to note. Not really, but <laughs> you get my point. So putting that aside, we can. there's not really a whole lot else that I can say about this assembly. I'm just really happy to show it off for you guys. So... Um, and I'm even more happy to give you the opportunity to make a replica of one of these because I would love to see people making these. And feel free to tell me if you do print yours, tell me how it goes. I'm very interested in hearing the various settings and uh, various ways that people print these, what printers they use, you know, all that sort of thing. And kind of give a general baseline of what the best results typically get with uh, certain people's settings. So before I ramble on any further, that's really all I have to say on this. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, or pertinent information relating to the topic, as always, drop it down in the comments below. I'm Duke, and I will see you all later.